Hello everyone and welcome to the installation stop. Please watch as we demonstrate how to install our radiant barrier insulation in a truss built attic. The particular truss design of this attic is complex, which makes the installation difficult. However, with patience and adequate time, it can be completed without too much trouble. As with any pitched roof design, you want the first run of material down at the bottom, close to the eaves. Generally, six to eight inches above any insulation where the rafters meet the eaves is ideal. Leaving this airspace is critical for good ventilation. All of the support members and webbing used in the trusses of this attic make movement difficult, so we decided to work in smaller, more manageable areas. Typically, you would want to run the material from one end of the attic to the other. You have to study your attic and decide what the best installation is for you. For the beginning wing of this attic, we pre-cut the insulation below and brought the material into the attic. Also, this attic has no plywood or leftover boards from the framers to walk on. Cutting pieces of 2x6 or 2x8 at various lengths and bringing them up to, the, to walk on will make installation much easier. As we filmed the first part of this attic installation, we didn't have these planks to walk on. And as you can see, you can still maneuver, but your footing is far less stable and balancing is more difficult. Once the first run is complete, prepare to start the second course. Again, a pre-cut piece in this attic will save you time. The entire run of the second row has truss parts called compression webs in the way. These are some of the structural members of the truss system. To insulate around these webs, we took a measurement on both the beginning side and ending side of our foil run, approximately 45 inches above the first piece. Because the radiant barrier rolls we are using for this installation are 48 inches wide, this will allow us a 3 inch overlap where the first and second row of insulation meet, in ideal spacing. We attach this second row only at the top, at the 45 inch measurement, and stapled down the length of the run until we ran into the webbing. Next we will come back and cut around the webbing. As you make the cuts, use a standard utility knife with a sharp blade. You can freehand the cut, but it's often easier to use the framing member as shown here as a cutting surface. After you make the cut, wrap the radiant barrier around the webbing and staple in place. Continue cutting and stapling around all the webbing. You can either cut all the supports out one at a time and come back and staple after, or cut and staple each as you go. Because movement is difficult, we chose to cut and staple each piece at a time. Now we will show the second and third support we need to cut around. For this attic we are using a manual staple gun. An electric one can be much easier, but you have to deal with the extension cord which in an attic installation often becomes problematic. Now we are at the third and last row of foil that will leave us approximately 10 inches from the peak or ridge of the attic, a perfect stopping point. Continue stapling and attaching the insulation where needed. Now that this set section of the attic is complete, reorganize and continue on other non-insulated areas. We hope you enjoyed this video and this is how you install attic radiant barrier in a complicated truss built attic. For more information, visit us online at www.insulationstop.com, your leader in radiant barriers and reflective foil insulation.